the cookie crumbles. But no, to get down to the reality of it, some people have private blood banks. You didn't know that. I don't. I really should, but I don't. I've thought about it. I remember reading about this years ago. I said, you know, the day is going to come. I may need some blood. I'd like to put together a blood bank. But then you ask yourself, how do you know if it's really yours? How do you know some shyster in the hospital isn't going to subvert it and switch it out for someone else? You don't really know. Short of building your own hospital, right? But I guarantee you George Soros has his own blood supply. This I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you that all those at the top of the liberal sphere would not take blood from a hospital pool of blood. I guarantee you. I guarantee you they have their own little blood supply somewhere. Anyway, I can guess that they would. It's nice to be rich and have all these special things like talk about equality and send your children to private school like the president does. Talk about poverty and anger and rage and take another several million dollar vacation. Yeah, it's nice to be king. Anyway, you get the picture. What's the point of talking about is what you're saying by now, right? Guess what? I'm going to talk about it even more. Because at the bottom of the hour, I'm going to have the leader of the army fighting ISIS from the Assyrian group. And you'll hear more about what they need and how we can help them right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. For millions of American workers, people in New Hampshire, all over America, they're working longer hours for low wages, deeply worried about their kids. So what do we do? First statement we make is we tell the billionaire class they cannot have it all. For a start, they're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. The fair share of taxes. Hey, Boney, Boney, does that include Buffett, Gates, and Zuckerberg? And your other new buddies? Others that wouldn't spit at you before? Because they're afraid you might make them pay taxes now. They're inviting you to dinner. They brought you a lox and a, and a pastrami. Includes them, Buffett, Gates, and Zuckerberg. Bernie, how about Clintons? Do they pay their fair share? I want to ask you, Bernie, does Bill Clinton pay his fair share of taxes? Or is he put it into a slush fund called the Clinton Library? Bernie, huh? Well, I lie. I'm such classic, classic communist rhetoric. Yeah, I'm all for billionaires paying their fair share of taxes. But most who ha have legitimate businesses pay more than their fair share of taxes. I'm worried about the new, uh, the new ones, the the uh, Zuckerbergs. Does he pay thirty nine percent of his gross? Does Zuckerberg pay thirty nine percent and fifteen percent estate tax? Can someone look into that? Well, you can't find out, of course. If he doesn't have a double Dutch, triple uh, Irish, quadruple egg cream tax structure, I'd like to know who does. Are you kidding me? Gates, we know, uh, the last Microsoft, the last I checked, they weren't paying 39%. They were uh, uh, taking their money in through uh, foreign fr uh, front companies. That's why they give so much money to the Democrats. That's what you would do if you had the money, wouldn't you? You'd buy favors. In Israel, it's called protexia. That's how you keep the uh, tax man off your back. But if you're Bar Raffelli and you didn't buy off the right tax cor corrupt tax official, in Israel, you wind up going to jail, to tax prison. The, the great free Israel, the threw her in jail. Can you believe this? What a, what a retrograde move that is in a country like that. Yeah, the land of the free and the home of the matzah. Okay. WJR, Jim, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Dr. Savage. You're my hero. I just caught a little bit of a, um, a, a brief mention to, uh, that you made about uh, rich people having their own uh, blood supply tucked away in the case of HIV. I was just getting off my elliptical trainer, and I, I, I missed most of your conversation, but I got so excited. I almost threw up. I'm still excited. So I wanted to tell you that there is definitely such a thing. I piped them in personally. I serviced them personally. I uh, worked for a refrigeration contractor that uh, did this kind of work. We put three blood banks in, one in Orlando, one in Miami, and one in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, wait, now, wait. You put these, these private blood banks where? In hospitals for the rich? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. They're just little freestanding buildings. They're just freestanding buildings about the size of a typical house. I'd say they're probably... Uh, uh, wait, wait, I don't understand. So in an emergency, how does the blood get from that building to the hospital? 
the people have to, the, what, it, what it is, is to see they, the, the, the donors come in, the people come in. By the way, you're never going to believe who was our spokesman. It was Bruce Jenner. Anyway, the people. <laughs> Go on. That's good. That's rich. Go no, ahead. Seriously. So how do they get the, okay, rich person gets in a car wreck. They need a, do, uh, a the transfusion. How do they get the blood from their own bank? It's, it's not, well. I'm not exactly sure what the process is or how the rich people would go back getting it. I only know the process of how it's how it's done. I know that. Well, okay, so what do you know? You know that they they what create their own blood banks. Have you seen the transfusions or not? They, are, they 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 put their own blood. They have their own blood drawn at these blood places. They have a nurse draw their blood in the, in, in one of the little clinic areas in these places where the chambers are. And uh, these chambers are you know, like a walk. All right. So there are private blood banks with individualized chambers for donors who can afford it, and it sits there like in a bank vault. And when they need it, somehow it gets from that that bank treasury, the blood bank treasury, to the hospital. Correct. Well, they would, they would send them out. All right, thank I, I mean, I knew that it happened, but you're giving us the details. A uh, special Christmas gift goes out to you, Government Zero, to you when I come back. The head of the Assyrian Army, Commander-in-Chief, right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'm confident that we're going to prevail, but uh, it is also important for us to keep things in perspective. And this is not an organization that uh, can destroy the United States. This is not a, a huge industrial power uh, that can pose great risks to us. Uh, well, here's a president who's a liar through and or, through and in denial through and through. They can't threaten us. Tell that to the grieving families in San Bernardino and all of the thousands of recruits that your FBI is following, Mr. Obama. Who do you think you're fooling? Do you think everybody is like the Stooges at NPR? Well, Wolf Blitzer, now let's get serious. There are young girls being ripped out of the arms of their mothers. You can hear them screaming on a smuggled out audio tape and videotape that I put up on michaelsavage.com. Little, pure girls. Think of your little daughter getting ready for Christmas. Now imagine a marauding army that comes in and prevents your husband from defending her. And they rip her out from your family's arms to use her as a sex slave. Because that's what's going on day and night in the Middle East. But because they're not Christians and they're not Jews, you don't hear about it. There's some weird people called Azidis, so you don't care about it. Well, I care about it because humans are humans. And right now we're facing vermin worse than Hitler. Emmanuel Koshaba is commander-in-chief of the entire Assyrian army. He was born in Kirkuk, Iraq. He's the real McCoy. He joins us now live on the Savage Nation. Mr. Koshaba, welcome to the program. Thank you, Michael Savage. Thank you for having me. Now, I want you to tell the audience, please, from the beginning, do we know each other? Did we ever meet personally? No. Uh, well, I, already... I, don't know Mr. I don't know Mr. Koshaba. He doesn't know me. But when I saw the article this morning of the men, 12 men who joined together to start an army to save their wives and children in their homes, I said, this is an astounding story. It has to be told. So let's ask some questions. Every day, 10 to 40, 120 millimeter mortar shells fired, are fired at your, at your towns and villages. Once or twice a week, the subhumans and ISIS try to overrun your positions. Every night, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., no sleeping. High alert, seven nights a week. Christmas will be a high day for attacks. How can we help you, Emmanuel? But uh, at first, uh, uh, thank you for mentioning us, uh, Michael, in your program. Uh, and uh, I hear about that, uh, uh, who contact you, that he say that the donation is going to buying bullets and weapons. Uh, that's uh, not really. The donation that came to our Assyrian army, Duchnosha, is uh, going to, our, to support our families. So in support our families, the fighter is be uh, uh, more comfortable to go and do his duty. Our duty, uh, Michael, is how we can save our people, our historic land, and retake our land from from the barbarian of of uh, Islamic State. So for that, we are, I'm here in U.S. Uh, since uh, uh, three weeks ago, and uh, I knocked the doors uh, uh, for, for the support 
for our people. We don't want to lose the Christianity. That land is historical land for the Assyrian Christian people. We don't want to lose it. We lose our population since 2003. Uh, more than 90 percentage of our population uh, uh, we lost it. So we are we are doing the last battle, as Shakespeare say, to be or not to be. This is this is our question, Michael. I hear you. It's a, it's a life and death struggle. So that leads us to the next question. I I, I have pictures of your uh, men on michaelsavage.com. And what, a, what struck me when I looked at the pictures was, I said, but for the grace of God, there goeth I. And I see this 1,400-year war against Christians and against the world by Muslims, and you are on the front lines with a little army, and after the attacks and the kidnappings of your people, men my age, a little younger in some cases, got together and formed an army of 12 men. How big is the army now? Uh, 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 you know, the, the support, when, when comes the support, we begin with uh, 12 uh, uh, fighters, with 12 men. But uh, then we became uh, more than uh, 300. Then the, the support, uh, we didn't have the, the enough support. We reduced now that number. But we can be enlarged if we have the support, Mike. All of our people... Um, no, it's, it's heartbreaking to believe that you're left to stand there on your own, with all of the money and power of the United States government, why are they not sending you weapons to defend your families? Well, this is this is a, a, a policy of the government, uh, uh, Michael. And uh, but wait, wait, hold on. This government, as we well know, is not the answer to your problem. But there's an opposition party called the Republicans. Is there not one Republican senator who's taken your side, who's come there and seen what you need and come back and try to raise money for you or ship weapons to you? You're telling me John McCain has not done this? Actually, we, we write to Senator John McCain uh, uh, since last year, to, uh, 2014, and uh, no one, no one uh, 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 replied to us. No one answered us. Well, John McCain but, seems to be in love with Obama's moderate rebels in Syria, but he can't seem to help uh, Syrian Christians in Syria. What's wrong with him? But let's put him aside. I'm going to do what the Senate should be doing. We're going to try and get awareness of what you need. How do they reach you? How do people send donations? Where's the fund? Uh, 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 actually, we, we have the, the only organization that helps us. It's unitedassyrianappeal.org. Uh, uh, they, they, they raise the money from the uh, uh, individual and our Assyrian people, and they send that directly to us. United All right, so I'm going to have to put that up on my website and put it out on Facebook. UnitedAssyrianFund.org, is that what it's named? UnitedAssyrianAppeal.org. Oh, UnitedAssyrianAppeal.org. I'm going to get it up on my website and put it on Facebook. Sir, how many men do you need to make sure that your village is in an overrun? How many men do you need? We actually, uh, uh, we asking about, about uh, uh, two, two teams of 12 men with training of special forces. We can raise... Uh, and size that, that, that you're telling me 24 men can save your, your your the remnants of your people and and this government is not giving you what you need uh, this is this is the beginning uh, michael we can if we have the support we can we can build uh, an army with the, with the zds we can build thousands of, of fighters i you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm shocked i'm appalled i can't believe this is going on in my lifetime you know, I look back on the 1930s, and I keep hearing about how no one came to the aid of the Jews in the 1930s. Why are the Jewish organizations not helping you? Well, uh, really, I, I don't know. Uh, you can ask them, uh, Michael. Uh, I, I, intend to, I intend to shame them into doing something other than feathering their own nests. I am so sick and tired of these billion-dollar organizations who do nothing for people like you who are fighting for your survival. So you actually are on the front lines, and you're telling me only 24 men can hold off an army of thousands? How is that even possible? Uh, the Jesus Christ with 12 men changed the world, uh, Michael. We oh, have my God. That we can, we can face ISIS 
uh, and we can grow in number if we have the support. This is you know, I keep reading have. that thousands of uh, thousands of psychotic throwbacks from around the world, all of the worst losers and vermin of the planet, go to join ISIS so they can rape young women and steal gold from Christians. What about?